This film is intended to give a picture of the training and the work of a Tasmanian school dental nurse. When we investigated Tasmania's chronic dental health problems some three years ago, it was decided that the proper approach to the problem was to treat the dental needs of school children and not just the uh, demand for treatment. There were not then and there are not now enough dentists available. So we decided to adopt the very successful New Zealand uh, dental nursing scheme which has operated in that dominion for uh, uh, more than 40 uh, years. We're very grateful to the New Zealand government for its invaluable assistance in establishing in this state the first school dental nursing service in the Commonwealth of Australia. School dental nursing offers an absorbing, a responsible and an important career to young women who when trained will be in the forefront in achieving the health department's goal of complete dental health for school children by the early 1970s. Catherine has ambitions in dentistry, not as a dental assistant, but a school dental nurse, a career first established in Tasmania and unique in Australia. Catherine has the educational qualifications. She is within the age group 17 to 25, but now the interview panel at the School for Dental Nursing meets her for the first time. Their main interest, that intangible quality, personality. The panel's decision. The long wait is over. Yes or no? The interviewing panel has found Catherine eminently suitable, and she is on the path which leads to two years of concentrated training. The matron welcomes and introduces the first year trainees to the school. From this point on, there is little leisure time as the girls try to absorb many unfamiliar subjects. Highly qualified members of the dental and medical professions lecture the student nurses on anatomy and physiology, hygiene, histology and dental histology. The basis of the entire course is laid down in the lecture room where initial enthusiasms are replaced by hours of intense concentration. Theory is the basis of all dentistry, but manual dexterity is also essential. Hands, shortly to carry out operative procedure, must develop sensitivity. Making jewellery, pottery and painting are three crafts included in the syllabus. This work contributes to any latent talent for the arts and is a relaxation from the discipline of the classroom and study. Near a home, manual dexterity is taken a step further in tooth carving. The student nurse carefully measures a real tooth, transfers the dimensions to a wax block, then proceeds to model a tooth twice as large as the original. By this method, students can identify individual teeth while gaining a high degree of manual dexterity.
Practicing on a phantom head is the next logical step. Natural teeth, set in plaster, teach head position and cavity cutting, both simple and compound. The pre-operative procedures here will be of paramount importance when the student nurse graduates to her own chair and her own patient. Another facet is the psychological approach to dental care. An allergy between a decayed tooth and a bad apple can graphically bring home to children the need to care for their teeth and so avoid, by prevention, the possibility of major dental surgery later. Familiar things make lessons in dental care both interesting and instructive. Dental nurses are expected to lecture various school age groups on dental health. Maintenance and care of all dental equipment is painstaking and time consuming. In the field, the dental nurse is thrown entirely onto her own resources and initiative to maintain her own equipment and see that it's up to hospital standards of cleanliness. Knowing the dental instruments is not enough. She must sharpen explorers, excavators, hatchets and chisels. Oil and maintain her drill and hand pieces and maintain the unit generally. The first-year trainee spends a certain time observing and assisting a senior nurse. She does not work on the patient, she merely watches and learns at the chair side. For those who elect to live in, a well-supervised hostel is provided. Even though a student nurse's social life is somewhat curtailed, life in the hostel could hardly be described as monastic. The hostel is comfortably furnished, and among the girls who live in, there is a camaraderie which exists between people who have set aims in a particular profession. For the seniors, maybe a late pass. For the others, a lecture in first aid, for all school dental nurses must hold the St. John General First Aid Certificate. Then there are exams and more exams. It's important to distinguish between dental nurses and proper dentists. School dental nurses are fully trained, qualified and authorized under the Dentist Act to practice dentistry on school children. But they only operate within the specific clinical fields which they are taught at the school. any school child requires treatment beyond the scope afforded by a dental nurse, these children are referred to a proper dentist who, in all cases, is a member of the dental health service.
Dental nurses advise parents on the state of their children's dental hygiene and discuss with them the proposed treatment and preventative dental health measures. Two years of hard, concentrated dental work and the nurse is ready for her own clinic in her own specified area. In two years, she has absorbed primary dental practice and theory, dental health education and patient psychology. With this background, she has become a member of a unique and dedicated profession. As the school dental nurses take their place in the community, parents can feel confident that the dental health of their children is in safe, efficient hands. 